Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. So after Novak Djokovic won his hearing today about his visa cancellation for traveling into the country of Australia to compete in the Australian Open, his visa was canceled by a delegate of the Minister for Home Affairs and he was questioned by the Australian Border Force for hours when he arrived in Australia. His visa cancellation was quashed, so he was given back his visa and he was also given back his personal belongings and told that he must be taken out of hotel detention in half an hour after the decision was made. Now, there were some earlier reports after this happened, after he'd been released, that he was re-arrested. Now, I heard a, the report came from his father, and it, as far as I know, is untrue. Now, what happened was he went to the building where his lawyers were for a long time, and a few things actually happened down there that we're going to take a look at. But the issue we have now that the court has ordered that he's fine to stay, and he's okay to play in the tournament, the Australian Open, well, it seems like the federal government isn't done with him because Alex Hawke, the Minister for Immigration and Citizenship, is now looking at taking extra steps to cancel Novak's visa. We're going to take a look at everything that happened post the trial and what could happen in the next day or two leading up to the potential cancellation of Novak's visa and what that would mean for him. All right, so Paul Sokal has been doing a lot of work. I think he works for The Age, political reporter down at The Age in Victoria. Now, this is what happened when a bunch of supporters, Novak Djokovic supporters, went to the place where he apparently was. It says Serbian fans arriving at the Melbourne building that Djokovic is in with his lawyer. Lots of folk music, group dancing, and free Noel chants. And a few shout of, shouts of sack Dan Andrews because we're still in Melbourne. This is what he posted on Twitter. So they were walking up the street and then they saw there's the police there guarding the car park and there were a few cars coming in and out and they had to let the cars through and disperse the crowd a bit. They were all there, they were singing and dancing. Now we have some of that footage here from the sun. Now as you can see everyone's standing in the middle of the road, some dancing, some chanting and then they got the drum out so they were doing some like was it what it said folk dancing and music in the street of Melbourne right outside where they thought Djokovic was. And then after a while, it, it actually turned a bit ugly because there was one car that was coming out of the driveway of the car park and it was an Audi, a black Audi. And this is what happened. <laughs> So it turns out someone jumped on the car and started dancing on the car and then the police started pepper spraying. I have another angle of this as well that we'll have a look at. Crowds dispersing, someone's running through the crowd of police and they were trying to get that Audi moving. There's just people running everywhere. I think he kicked the car. So we're going to have another look at this, uh, a look at this other angle. And this is from Russia Today. So you can see there the wall of police around the car with that massive crowd. Now there's the guy in the background. You can see him jumping on the car now. He's on the car. He's dancing on the car, and then you can see here, there's the cop. He's pulled out his pepper spray now, right here. He's pulling out his pepper spray, and then lets it go right in front of the crowd. Now, I will say one thing. Victoria Police has a history of doing this throughout the whole COVID period. There were a bunch of protests and demonstrations down in Melbourne for a long time during this whole couple of years during COVID. And they have been really trigger happy with the capsicum spray or pepper spray on citizens down in Melbourne. They're not shy of using the pepper spray. I'll just say that. So then the crowd starts to disperse. There goes the camera guy. He's going to get out of the way because he's getting sprayed. There was one other thing. He's got the pepper spray out in front of himself. He deploys it right into this guy who's, I don't know, was he walking away? It looks like he's walking away. Oh, he turned around. So he puts his arm up as he sprays it. But I don't know if he was walking towards him or away from him. I can't tell. Because he got sprayed. He runs at him, gets sprayed again. And then runs back. Then they're getting stuff thrown at them. He, and then he flicked out the baton. Did you see that? He flicked out the baton. He picks up his baton. He dropped it. Picks it up. Flicks it out. And then he's got it in his hand ready to whack someone. Then they pepper sprayed a bit more. There you go. And then the crowd moved away and then they got the car out. Now look at how many cops there are. So that's what happened just after the hearing for Novak Djokovic. So here's the tweet from Paul Sakal says, Novak Djokovic has not been arrested. Reports of his arrest are inaccurate, according to the Australian government and tennis sources. The immigration minister is still deciding whether to re-cancel his visa. So it's up to the immigration minister now, who I showed in my last video, Alex Hawke, this guy. It's up to him to decide whether he wants to, and speak to the government as well, and then decide if he will cancel Novak Djokovic's visa. So they're the scenes right after the hearing. And now let's look at the breakdown and see what could happen tomorrow or in the next day. The Federal Circuit Court Judge Anthony Kelly ordered that the Minister for Home Affairs decision to cancel the visa be reversed. This is what happened in the trial. And that Djokovic should be released from immigration detention, which he was. The main reason for the concession was that Djokovic was not given enough time to seek advice and respond to the intention to cancel the visa when he was detained at Melbourne Airport, which I've done in previous videos before. You can check them out. But what we're waiting on now is whether another 
another federal government minister, who I showed here, Alex Hawke, the Minister for Immigration, will use a separate set of powers to cancel the visa again. We don't expect a decision either way will be made tonight and could be as early as tomorrow morning. Here it is from 10 News. It remains within Immigration Minister Alex Hawke's discretion to consider cancelling Novak Djokovic's visa, his spokesperson said in a statement. And we actually have that statement here. The minister is currently considering the matter and the process remains ongoing. So he's currently considering it. We'll see what happens if, it, if it's tomorrow or maybe the next day, probably consult with the PM and a few other legal experts to see what they can do. Now, we also have this liberal MP, John Alexander, who actually used to be a tennis player, implores his colleagues not to cancel Djokovic's visa. He said, the minister's personal power to cancel visas are designed to prevent criminals walking our streets. They are not designed to assist in dealing with a potential political problem of the day because federal election is coming up in potentially two months. So an election is coming up very soon and the government has just been slapped in the face basically by the federal court because they said, we're going to overturn the decision that you made to cancel his visa. So they kind of look a bit stupid. So now they want to maybe potentially get back at Djokovic or the courts and saying, we're going to take our powers and we're going to cancel his visa and he's not allowed to re-enter the country for at least up to three years. That's the consequence of what the government could do to him. He said, it would appear COVID negative Novak has complied with all health entry requirements. The judge asking, what more could this man have done, which we've covered before? Based on this, Novak does not seem to present an unreasonable health risk to Australia. So what would be the public interest? The minister could potentially use to exercise his personal powers to deport our defending Australian Open tennis champion. Yes, defending Open champion, and he donated a lot when we had the terrible fires a couple years ago. Retaining the Australian Open as a Grand Slam event, I would argue, is our, in our national interest. The minister's personal power to cancel visas are designed to prevent criminals otherwise working, walking our streets or prevent a contagious person otherwise walking our streets. They're not designed to assist in dealing with a potential political problem of the day. Now, the interesting thing is because Novak is negative. Now, Nick Kyrgios has had a few things to say, but it's interesting now that Nick Kyrgios, apparently he's done the right thing. He's taken the vax. Oh, what's that? Turns out he contracted COVID-19 and now he might miss the Australian Open. Whereas Novak Djokovic, unvaccinated and healthy, and they don't want him to play. So how does this work? What an upside down world. Someone who's walking in our country is unvaccinated, but he's got no symptoms now. He's reco recovered from COVID with no symptoms now. He's not allowed in, according to the federal government, but it was overturned. But Nick Kyrgios, vaccinated, all that, gets COVID, now he can't play. I, I don't know what world we're living in anymore, but that's what's happened. Hopefully we'll find that out by tomorrow. If Novak will be deported from the country, and if he is, and they do cancel it, he will not be allowed in for up to three years. Anyway, that's it guys. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this video out there, and I'll see you in the next one.